Let's continue from where we left last video. We have this scene, which is taking 442 megabytes of memory. Let's also see how long it takes to load. That's 1.28 seconds, which is not good at all. Considering that in this scene we are only loading a model with 33k vertices and also compiling two shaders. Let's go over the loading model strategy. The model is probably contained in the GLTF file, which is loaded with ASIM. This GLTF file contains the model geometry and the textures of the model. To load the geometry of the model, we are iterating over each vertex and each index, and then we are uploading those to a staging buffer, which is a buffer that is visible to both CPU and GPU, and then we are uploading that buffer to a GPU-only buffer. In the case of this model, which has 33k vertices and 63k triangles, that's a lot of iterations for a single model. For the textures, we are using STB image to decompress the PNG and then, using the same strategy, we are uploading the data to the GPU and then we are generating the MIP maps. For a 2K texture, we are wasting 16 megabytes on the GPU. For the geometry, there's nothing we can really do about the data since we need everything to render, but we can optimize the loading time. And for the textures, we can optimize both memory and loading time. When we are loading the model, we are iterating through the data and then we use the index and vertex output directly in the game. What if, instead of doing this, we are separating the core loading logic into a different executable and then the output we are writing in a binary file along with some metadata to help us load the data faster. And then we are reading the data directly into the staging buffer and from the staging buffer directly to the GPU. Now, on runtime, the whole loading logic is just one line of code. For texture loading, we can do the same. We can take the output from an STB image, write it to a binary file, and then read that output directly into the staging buffer and then on the GPU. But now we are only optimizing the loading time. Let's understand the memory footprint of the image. This is how much memory each MIP takes. And keep in mind that this model has 12 textures, so that's around 250 megabytes. This is no good at all. Actually, this is really bad. To fix this, we can use Kronos textures. The powerful thing about this is that we can convert from PNG to Kronos texture and then to block compressed texture. Block compressed textures lives on the CPU compressed and then, when it's needed on the fly, the GPU uses specialized hardware to decompress the image and use it on runtime. And the difference between block compressed textures and normal texture is not even noticeable. On the logs I got from the asset packer, now the whole texture takes around 5.5 megabytes, including MIPS, and the whole 12 textures is now 66 megabytes. This is amazing, this is a 70% memory footprint reduction for the textures. Now for the shaders, the business is as usual. You take the shader code, compile it with shader C and get a spur V output. Then the spur V output can be written to a binary file along with some metadata about the uniforms and everything. This metadata can be extracted with spur V cross. Now let's see the loading time using this new method. The loading time went from 1.28 seconds to 0.35 seconds. This is a huge difference. There is also one big hidden advantage. Now we don't have to link all these dynamic libraries to our game executable. We can just link them to the asset packer and use the output of that in our game. And this whole workflow can be automated with shell scripts for convenience.